X1 Plus Community Firmware has been publicly released. Today we go through the installation step by step. X1 Plus has been released to the public, and to mark that occasion, earlier this week, I was a guest on a 3D Printing Nerd live stream, and in that stream, Joel completed a fresh install. In this video, we aim to go through that process again, step by step and concisely. The first question you're probably asking is, what is X1 Plus firmware? And secondly, why would you use it? The best thing you can do is follow the link in the description through to the X1 Plus wiki, where the splash page covers exactly this. We have a list of current features, and then a section on the benefits versus risks, as well as how the custom firmware works. You also may wish to follow the link to my previous video on X1 Plus, which was made just as X1 Plus knowledge was becoming public. In summary, X1 Plus is a community firmware for the Bamboo Lab X1 printers. It retains all of the standard functionality and operations. This means you can still manage your AMS, slice and send prints wirelessly, and use all of the manual controls from the touchscreen. But on top of that, we get features like advanced diagnostics, the option of increased network security, and even completely new features like lock screens with passcodes. Obviously these are the upsides, there are risks and downsides too, so please read the documentation carefully to ensure you make an informed decision. Assuming you want to continue, here are four prerequisites. Obviously, you need a Bamboo Lab X1 Series 3D printer. You must have a Bamboo Lab account with the printer bound to it. You must have the Bamboo Lab Handy Mobile app and be logged in, and you must have an SD card, 16GB or greater, formatted to FAT32. The first step is probably the most important, and you really need to do your due diligence in making a decision on whether or not to proceed. We will be following the installation guide on the X1 Plus wiki. It may be updated after my video, so please use it as your primary source. The first step is the most controversial one, and that's clicking through to the Bamboo Lab website. When on this page, make sure you're logged in, and then proceed to read everything very carefully. There's two pages of warnings and terms and conditions to read. In short, it outlines the risks and consequences of switching to community firmware. The most important part for most people is that by using the community firmware, you will forfeit any relevant after-sales warranty and or support. And if we tick and click through to the second page, we have a more specific list of problems that may occur, and more warnings about warranty in terms of third-party firmware. Firstly, I think it's perfectly reasonable for Bamboo Lab to have this firmware affect your warranty, because with root access to the printer, it is possible to go in and really cause some damage, and I don't think it should be on them to fix your mistakes. However, if you had some sort of failure unrelated to community firmware, the right thing for Bamboo Lab to do would be to provide support as if the printer was unmodified. As I make this video, it's too early to tell what will happen when this is tested in reality. A phrase that might apply here is hope for the best but prepare for the worst. With the best case being that Bamboo Lab makes a reasonable attempt to honour the warranty for failures clearly unrelated to X1+. And the worst case being that they refuse to consider any warranty or support claims for a printer running X1+. I would suggest that if this outcome is a deal breaker for you, then you should not proceed. It's also worth checking the date of your purchase and coming to the warranty statement and seeing if your warranty is still in effect. For much of the world, it's only one year, and if your warranty is already expired, this might make your decision clear. Assuming you are happy to proceed, and again, please think about it carefully, we can tick the box at the bottom of the second page and click on I got it. On the next page, you'll be prompted to select your X1 printer. Some people will have more than one, so be careful to select the correct machine. When we tick the box, we'll once again be presented with the same warning, we can agree, and then join the third-party firmware plan. That is of course after we click another confirmation. We're now told to restart the printer and update to the official rootable firmware. To do that, we switch over to the Bamboo Handy app and select our chosen printer. We then tap on the three horizontal lines in the top right corner, and from that menu we'll then tap on firmware version, and then scroll down to the very bottom to see the option I want to downgrade to a previous version. There may be multiple versions listed, but none of them actually say firmware R, but the install guide recommends a version that's 1.06, and in the middle that's exactly what I have showing, so I'm going to select that, and then press install this version. After pressing confirm, the process will start automatically. Firmware R will then be downloaded to the printer, 
with the Bamboo Handy app and the printer's display showing the same thing. And then the next step is for firmware R to actually install. Once again, we can follow along with this on the printer. When everything's done, the progress bar will disappear and we can click back where the app will now reveal the process is complete. Onto the final steps, rooting the printer and installing X1 Plus. You may be prompted to update the firmware, but you do not want to do this. Instead, we want to come to settings and then general, and then write down on a piece of paper, our LAN only access code. Once we've done this, we can then come down to third party firmware plan down the bottom and finally press root the firmware. Very soon, we'll have an unlock icon in the home tab with confirmation that the firmware is rooted and we have another password to write down. And it's worth resetting the password until we get one without O's or zero so there's no confusion. Again, write this down on a piece of paper. Before we proceed, we're going to pay attention to the instructions by closing Orca Slicer or Bamboo Studio. This will ensure we don't run into any unexpected errors. And then after that, we can head to the main page of GitHub and come down to releases. We'll scroll down to whatever the latest version is and then download the installer for your computer, Linux, Mac or Windows. On Windows, this will give you a zip file and you can extract the folder inside to a location of your choice. Before we open the installer, we need to insert our pre-formatted SD card into the printer's LCD. Otherwise, we'll get a warning on the installer and have to start again. We can now double click to launch the X1 Plus installer. This part is really straightforward. We firstly select our printer, double checking the serial number if we've got more than one, and then type in the LAN access code and the SSH password that we previously wrote down on a piece of paper. You'll have confirmation that your firmware is correct and a disclaimer from the X1 Plus team saying that there is risk associated with this process. If you're happy to continue, you can tick the box and then click install X1 Plus. The installer will give you updates and fortunately the process is very close to automatic. And once it gets up to running on printer installation, we can head over to the printer. On the screen will be confirmation of what we are installing. And after we click install, we'll be given yet another disclaimer and we'll have to tap yes to proceed. When we do so, the process will start and we'll get updates on the screen. The only intervention you'll likely need is to hit yes to download the factory firmware from the Bamboo Lab servers. As I've previously described, X1 Plus respects Bamboo Lab's intellectual property and doesn't distribute their firmware. Therefore, it will be downloaded as part of the installation process. Throughout the process, you'll get continual progress updates until finally the installation is marked as done and you can tap the button to reboot into X1 Plus. The initial splash screen is exactly as before. There's then a custom boot menu, which will expire and automatically boot after 10 seconds. We'll then see a specific boot screen for X1 Plus. This is slower than the default machine booting, but I guess that's the downside of running the OS off the SD card. Even though you're running new firmware, all of the maintenance messages will still be in place. And I stand with Joel in not lubricating my lead screws. Let's do a quick tour. And apart from the logo, the printer's firmware will look pretty much like it did before. You'll still have the same print menu to pick prints from internal micro SD card or print cache. You'll still have all the same manual controls for filament, print options and running the AMS. The Bamboo Handy app will work exactly as before without making any changes. Also, your slicer, whether it be Orca Slicer or Bamboo Studio, will work exactly as it did before. But if we look in the settings, we'll see we have the option for expanded security. And if we come to settings and then tools, we'll see all of the expanded diagnostics. This is also where we can access the on-screen console, set up the lock screen, and play with some other cool things. If you're looking for some guidance on these features, I've linked in the description the user manual on the wiki that goes through everything step by step. This includes how to customize what the physical buttons on the printer will do, and how to use your own custom images throughout the printer's UI. One important thing to note is that X1 Plus is now running off that SD card. So do not remove it while the printer is on or you're going to get a pretty dramatic warning. Also, if you try to boot the printer without the SD card in place, you're going to get errors there as well. Let's quickly discuss the boot menu in more detail. By default, after 10 seconds, it will boot up to X1 Plus. Start from SD card will do this instantly or alternatively, we can come to startup options. Please note, all of these options are covered in the X1 Plus manual. Things you can do, including resetting X1 Plus, accessing an emergency recovery console, and if you needed to, booting back into Bamboo Labs OEM firmware R. This menu is also currently how we do updates. Perhaps there'll be a wireless or completely offline version in the future, but this is the current method for updating X1 Plus. 
we come to the releases on GitHub and all we need to download is the .x1p file. We then place that into the root of our X1 Plus SD card. We start the printer, come to the startup options menu and then click X1 Plus installer. We can verify the version we want is listed and then tap on install. We'll see the usual warning message and once we click yes, the update should be completely automatic with the exception being that we might need to download Bamboo Lab based firmware once more. And that should be everything you need to know to install X1 Plus. And although this is just the beginning, the future is bright. When customers purchased an X1 printer in the past, they did so believing that everything was proprietary and locked down. But thanks to the hard work of the X1 Plus team and Bamboo Lab's willingness to compromise and give users a choice, here we are. Hopefully, we'll see some innovation from the community with features that make their way back into the OEM firmware. Just like we see with Orca Slicer features making their way to Bamboo Studio. Thank you to everyone involved, thank you for watching, and until next time, happy custom firmware 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.